Welcome to the realm of cutting edge technology. Have you ever wondered what it would like to harness the immense power of Google's computing infrastructure right at your fingertips? Look no further, for in digital realm that there exists a phenomenon known as Google Collab. An interesting fusion of cloud computing and collaborative prowess. Imagine a world where you can effortlessly explore the limitless possibilities of artificial intelligence, machine learning and data analysis without the need for expensive hardware or complex setups. Google Collab emerges as Celestial Century offering you a virtual laboratory to experiment, create and collaborate with like-minded enthusiasts from every corner of the globe. In this exciting video, we will understand what is Google Collab and then we will have a complete overview of it. So let's start with the first topic, what is Google Collab? So Google Collab is a free online tool that lets you do coding and data related work on the internet. It's like having a virtual notebook where you can write and run Python code without needing to install anything on your computer. With Collab, you can also get data from different places and share your work with others easily. Another cool thing is that it gives you access to powerful processors like GPUs and TPUs which make tasks like machine learning and data science faster and more efficient. So it's a great tool for learning and working on coding and data projects. Alright, now let's have a look at Google Collab. Let's have a complete overview of it. So first of all, Google Collab requires a Google account for access. To begin, visit the link Welcome to Collaboratory. Right, welcome to Collaboratory as you can see. We'll click on this. Then we'll click on this, open this one and sign in using our Google account or credentials. If you have already have a Google account, then you can just sign in with that. All right. Now let's start with the Google Collab. We'll simply write Google Collab. We'll click on this. All right, so this is the window that appears when you click on that. First of all, here we have is example tab. So the example tab offers some initial examples to help you begin using Collab. For a comprehensive understanding of collaborative features and efficient usage of Collab documents, refer to the document title Overview of Collaborative Features. It covers the fundamental aspects to get you started efficiently. Then there is recent tab. All right. So the recent tab displays a collection of all the latest documents you have been working on. All right. Now next is our Google Drive tab. The Google Drive tab features allows you to import any of your previous notebooks directly from your Google Drive. All right. Then next is GitHub tab. So with the GitHub tab, you have the option to import notebooks from your own GitHub repository or any public repository. Simply provide the GitHub URL and you can easily import notebooks from the desired public repository. Then we have is upload tab. So the upload feature allows you to bring and work on your own Jupyter notebooks that you have created on your computer. You can easily upload any file from your local machine by selecting the choose file option. Here it is, choose file option. Now next is our creating a notebook. As you can see, here's a new notebook option. And there's a cancel option so creating a notebook so to create a new notebook you have the option to use the new notebook button located at the bottom by clicking on this button a new untitled notebook will be generated to give it a specific name and simply click on the current type untitled name if we want to name it so as we have clicked on it yeah to give it a specific name as we just said simply click on the current type untitled name on the notebook and make the desired changes so let's say we want to make it sp1 let's just say it a name all right so next is our cell here we can see this is a cell in a notebook cell serve as the fundamental building blocks encompassing everything within there are two types of cells actually one is code cell as you can see it contains executable code and has a run button on the left side to execute its content this one all right the output is displayed its output is displayed below the code cell after running right then the next one is other one is text cell so a text cell can include text images links and more you can edit its content by double clicking it the text cell supports markdown markup language 
but you can also use the provided options on top on the top for formatting the right half of the cell shows you how your edit text will appear all right now the next point would be adding a new cell like how to add a new cell to add a new code or text cell use the respective option at the top of the work area as you can see these code or text by clicking on these we can add code cell and text cell so clicking on any of these buttons here's a new cell right below the current one you can like let's say we want to add this so now we want to add this we can add this also now you can rearrange the cell order using the arrow options located at the top right corner of each cell as you can see by using these we can do that yeah the up arrow moves the cell one position up while the down arrow moves it down by one position as you can see now adding and running a code let's talk about this so by default google collab provides one initial code cell which can be supplemented with additional cells as desired these cells serve as a platform for writing and executing python code for instance let's consider the following code let's say first of all i have to let us delete all these this one also yeah so first of all we'll try one code let's see how it goes so we'll simply write the code print yeah print my favorite color is yellow all right so now let's try to execute it we can run it by clicking on this it is running executing so as you can see my favorite color is yellow is being printed so you can either press on this play button to run the code or you can press control plus enter to run the code as you can see control plus enter to run the cell now next is changing the order of the cell so in google collab you have multiple options for rearranging cells you can utilize the up cell and down cell buttons located in the toolbar above the notebook as we discussed previously alternatively you can employ keyboard shortcuts such as control shift up or control shift down to move the chosen cell up or down additionally you have the flexibility to reorder cells by clicking on the cell number in the left gutter and draw it, dragging it to a different position all right now deleting the current tab so to delete the current tab in google collab you can use the delete icon available over the top of the cell this icon looks like a trash can and it will remove the selected cell from the notebook as you can see this is the trash can and this is just at the right above corner of the cell by clicking on this we can delete the tab alternately you can also use the keyboard shortcut control plus m and d to delete the current cell you can also right click on the cell and select delete cells from the context menu as you can see delete cell all right now we will understand how to add data sets so to add data sets from your local device go to the left corner and click on the folder icon as you can see this is the left corner and this is a folder icon we we'll click on that now click on the upload icon and upload the desired file this is the upload icon we we'll click on that now we can upload the desired file whichever we want all right you can also upload files by writing a particular command let's try writing that command okay so we'll write from google dot collab import files let's import files all right after that we'll write upload equals files dot upload after that we'll put on brackets all right now we'll press control and enter and here we can see choose files now from here you can choose files so both the ways you can upload files i'm just telling now let's understand how to like import libraries in google collab so first of all we have to cancel upload we'll click on this 
All right. So to import it, we'll write import pandas as pd. All right. After that, we'll write pd dot read. So here we are importing the CSV files actually. So we have to write like xpd dot read underscore CSV and inside this we'll write a file. Let's say I have to check what what all files like this is the sample data files, right? So you have to write the file name actually which you want to import that CSV file name. I'm writing sample underscore data. Alright. test the location you have to put dot csv so this is the location all right so if we want to display 10 rows we'll write df dot head we'll write 10 now we'll press control and enter and we can see 10 rows are being displayed so this is how you can import and like showcase the data and all. So this was about the Google Collab. We have covered major things in that, many important things in that. There are there must be many more things in that that you will explore when you will start using it. So after understanding about Google Collab and hearing about various cloud technologies, if you want to become a cloud engineer, then check our postgraduate program in cloud computing. Our comprehensive course covers Microsoft Azure, AWS, and GCP empowering you to deploy dynamic and independent applications seamlessly. Discover the intricacies of these leading cloud platforms and master the core skill sets needed for success. Join us to transform your career and step confidently into the world of cloud computing. Enroll now and embark on an exciting journey towards a bright future in the cloud industry. Don't miss this opportunity. Alright, with that we have come to the end of this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I hope it really helped you all. Thanks for watching, stay safe and keep learning. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.